Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. I'm here to help you make sense of everything you've been learning in class. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to calculate empirical formulas. If you're trying to make an A in chemistry, go ahead and press the like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment and let me know. So you know what's coming next. You need something to write with. You need a periodic table. We're calculating empirical formulas. You need a calculator. My favorite, math. So let's get started. We are going to need to use mole conversions to calculate the empirical formula. So if you don't know how to calculate moles from grams, let's start there. Okay, let's talk about what an empirical formula is. So an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms in a compound. I call it the reduced down version or the simplified version. It's the basic ratio of the elements in a compound. When we're calculating empirical formula, there's a little saying that helps you remember all of the steps, and it kind of rhymes. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. I say this all the time, so it'll help me to remember all of the steps. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. I'm probably gonna say it several more times during this video. Let's work a problem and see what this is all about. What is the empirical formula for a compound which contains 53.73% iron and 49.27% sulfur? These percents came from a percent composition problem. Percent composition, I do have a video on that if you need to know how to calculate percent composition. So our first step, percent to mass. This actually isn't a step. We're not going to do any math for that. Okay, so if we list our percents, the only thing that we have to do to go from percent to mass is just rewrite that number, but instead of putting a percent sign with it, we're just gonna put a G for grams. Step one, done. Percent to mass. Now we're gonna go mass to mole. So we're gonna convert mass to mole, little dimensional analysis problem, using the molar mass of the element. Okay, so we have this set up. We have grams on top, so we're gonna put the molar mass on bottom. The molar mass of iron from the periodic table is 55.85. That's equal to a mole. We look down at sulfur. Sulfur's molar mass is 32.06. But we gotta put that diagonal, make sure that cancels out. Okay, so when I put these in the calculator, 53.73 grams of iron divided by 55.85 grams of iron, and I'm getting 0 0.96201. Now, I didn't round. I used a lot of decimal places on purpose. I always say use at least four to five decimal places. Let's look at sulfur, 46.72 grams. We gotta put that down at the bottom, we divide, and that gets us 1.446. Again, I purposely did not round. We need lots of decimal places. So that takes care of mass to mole. We have done percent to mass, mass to mole. Now we're going to divide by small. That just means look at my answers available. Whatever one's the smallest, divide both of them by the smallest. And this one is the smallest. So let's divide both of our answers by that. Okay, when I do that, that forces one of my elements to equal one. That's the whole point. We're trying to find a ratio. And the other one, was 1.5. Now, I think it was really like 1.4999 something, but we went ahead and rounded that because we're almost to the end. Now we can start rounding. We don't round until the very, very, very end. We don't always need to multiply till whole because our point is, is we want whole numbers here. Well, we don't have whole numbers here. 1.5. When we divide by small, we're wanting that to give us a whole number, but it doesn't always give us a whole number. There's no rounding here. The only time you can round, let's say you get like 0 0.01. Okay, you can go ahead and just leave that as is, as a whole number. Or if you get 0.9 something, you can go ahead and round that up to the next digit. But if you have numbers in between 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, no, 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 no you cannot round that to a whole number. You've got to multiply till whole. And we get a one and a 1.5. Now I know normally you would round a 1.5 up to a two, but like I said, you cannot do that for empirical formula. So we need to think of a number we can multiply to get a whole number. 
So 0.5, that just means a half. So if we were to multiply by two, that is going to get us a whole number. Okay, so I hope I didn't confuse you by just kind of scooping off some of my problem. I needed to make a little bit of room, but we're just gonna keep going horizontally until the very end, okay? So I multiplied my one by two, and that just gets me a two. But when I multiply 1.5 by two, that gets me a three, a whole number, and that's what I needed. So now we're ready just to create the empirical formula. This tells us that we have two irons and three sulfurs. And so our empirical formula is Fe2S3. I know, the very first time you look at an example of this, you're like, what did she just do? So let's work another one. What is the empirical formula of a compound which contains 15.77% aluminum, 28.11% sulfur, and 56.12% oxygen? Let's remember those steps. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply by whole. I didn't mention this on the first problem, but let me mention it now. If in your given, you're given grams and not percents, sometimes I've seen problems written in a way to where these numbers that you're given, they already say grams. If that's the case, then you can skip percent to mass. It's already in mass. But this one says percent, so we've got to go through all of it. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. Okay, so we have our percents. Now let's go percent to mass. Okay, so remember, when we go percent to mass, there's really nothing to do except for rewrite your number with grams. In fact, when I'm writing this on paper, oftentimes I skip this. As I'm reading the problem and writing down my given, I just go straight to mass. You can go ahead and do that if you would like. Okay, we got percent to mass. Now we need to go to mass to mole. So let's convert our units to mole using the molar mass straight from the periodic table. Okay, so I set up our mole problems by using the molar mass. Aluminum's molar mass is 26.982, so I put that on the bottom. We're just going to divide, and when we do, we get 0 0.58446. Remember, don't round. If you round too early, it will mess you up at the end, and you'll have the wrong whole numbers. Okay, let's look at sulfur. We have 28.11 grams, but the molar mass is 32.06. That's diagonal. We're just going to divide, and we get 0 0.87679. And then oxygen, we have 56.12 grams. The molar mass of oxygen is 15.999 on the periodic table. So again, we're going to divide those and we get 3.50772. Percent to mass, mass to mole. Now we're ready to divide by small. So when we compare these three answers, we're looking for the smallest one. And the smallest one is this one. We're going to divide each of them by the small. Okay, so remember our whole point is to get a whole number. When we divide by small, this is where we can round. But only, only, only if it's almost the whole number. So you know what? I'm going to back up. You can't round. You can only round to the whole number if you've got 0 0.0, maybe 0 0.1, or 0 0.8, maybe 0 0.9, but nothing in between. No 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 cannot round. Again, I get a 1.5, so we are going to have to multiply by whole. We divided by small, did not get whole numbers. We've got to multiply until we get whole. 0.5, that's a half, so if we multiply that by 2, we'll get the whole number we're looking for. Here we are with whole numbers. We're going to end up with 2 aluminum, 3 sulfur, 12 oxygen. Kind of looks weird though, right? Two aluminum, three sulfur, 12 oxygen. That's because really and truly that sulfur and oxygen is a polyatomic ion. Let's see if this looks a little bit better. There we go. I took that three out, still three sulfurs and 12 oxygen, but what we have is two aluminum and three sulfates. Now my next two examples are going to go from empirical formula to molecular formula. Remember, the empirical formula is the reduced down version. It's not the true molecular formula. And sometimes you'll have questions that only ask about empirical formula. Other times you're going to have questions that ask about empirical formula and molecular formula. So our next example, I'm going to already give you the empirical formula. We're going to solve for the molecular formula. Naphthalene is a carbon and hydrogen containing compound often used in mothballs. 
the empirical formula is C5H4, and its molar mass is 128.16 grams per mole. Find the molecular formula. So we're not going to do any of the calculations of finding the empirical formula because it's already been given. But we do need to talk about how do we find the molecular formula if we know the empirical formula. We need to find a multiplier. And I'm calling this a molecular formula multiplier. And to do that, we need the molecular molar mass. I'm just going to call that molecular mass. And we're going to divide that by the empirical mass, the empirical formula's molar mass. Once we do that, we should get a whole number. And we're going to use that whole number to raise the subscripts of the empirical formula to get the true molecular formula. Okay, let me show you how to do that. So first we need to find the empirical molar mass, the empirical mass. So we've got five carbons, four hydrogen, that molar mass is 64.087. We were given the molecular formula mass in the problem, and you will always be given that if the question is asking you to find the molecular formula. You will always be given that molar mass. Here it is, 128.16. So we're going to take that number, it's the largest number, and we're gonna divide it by the empirical formula, the smaller of the two numbers. And when we do, we get a 2, whole number 2. Now, if I were to get 1.9, 1.8, we're going to go ahead and round that up. But it better be very, very close. If not, you're going to have to go calculate that molar mass again. Something must have went wrong. Okay, so we're going to use that 2 as a multiplier. So let's remember the empirical formula again, C5H4. Now, we're going to use this multiplier to multiply those subscripts. So our true molecular formula, c 10 H8. Okay, our last example, we're going to do it all. We're going to calculate empirical formula and we're going to calculate molecular formula. It's kind of a lot, but a lot of the times those are the questions you're asked, so I want to make sure and show you how to do that. The molar mass of nicotine is 162 grams per mole. It contains 74% carbon, 8.7% hydrogen, and 17.3% nitrogen. Determine nicotine's empirical formula and molecular formula. Okay, so let's review those steps one more time. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. Okay, so I went ahead and took care of percent to mass. Again, we just rewrite the number with grams. No math. Okay, so now we've got to go mass to mole. So we've got to divide by the molar mass. We're given grams. we got to put grams on bottom to cancel. That tells us to divide. So we have 8.7 grams divided by 1.008. So for hydrogen, our moles are 8.63095. Remember, don't round. Use a lot of decimal places. Some teachers say use all the decimal places. Okay, then we've got 74 grams of carbon. We gotta put grams on bottom to cancel out. The mass of carbon on the periodic table is 12.011. When we put that in the calculator, we get 6.15641. And then let's look at nitrogen, 17.3 grams is given, so we've got to put our grams on bottom, cancel those units out, and we get 1.2351. That's our mass. We've gone percent to mass, mass to mole. Now we got to divide by small. This is the step people forget. A lot of times you start trying to multiply by whole here, and you get stuck, and you're like, what the heck? It's because you forgot to divide by small. Don't forget that. It's super important. Okay, let's divide by small. The small is nitrogen, 1.2351. And look at that. Isn't that so nice? They are already whole numbers. So we do not have to multiply by whole. We can stop short if we need to when you get whole numbers. So our empirical formula for nicotine is C5H7N. Five carbons, seven hydrogens, one nitrogen. Okay, so remember, we want to also find the molecular formula. So just in case you forgot, we need to find a multiplier. The molecular formula multiplier, which is the molecular mass divided by the empirical mass. So we need to find the empirical mass. And if we add up five carbons, seven hydrogens, and one nitrogen, we get 81.118. That is our empirical molar mass. Now, I don't know how I managed to leave the molar mass of the molecular formula out of the question. I just got through telling you that I'm always gonna give that to you. So here it is. Molar mass of nicotine is 162 grams per mole. 
So we're going to divide that by the empirical molar mass. 162 divided by 81.118, and it's close enough to round to a whole number of 2. Our multiplier is 2. So if our empirical formula is C5H7N1, our molecular formula is C10H14N2. That's how you calculate empirical formulas. You may have noticed empirical formula, we're still calculating moles. So if you're still a little sketchy on that, go back and watch that video. The one that's gonna help you the most is mass to mole, mole to mass. If that helped and you have yet to press the like and subscribe button, please go do that. Also, share this with your friends if you think that this would help them. Until next time, bye y'all.